Comment ça va Ça va bien ah, Ça va très bien, merci. Oui, très bien. C'est le meilleur de mon français. Merci. Et Freddy et moi nous avons été en contact avec mes collègues de l'Office de l'Atlantique Space Office pour plusieurs mois, si ce n'est pas des années. Thales Eleni est l'un des plus grands, si ce n'est pas le plus grand uh, système intégrateur pour uh, les technologies de in l'Europe. Et il prend beaucoup de temps pour avoir pour les nouvelles compagnies une connexion avec such uh, big uh, companies. So Freddy, we would really like to hear from you, maybe share your experience. What does it take for, for small companies to, to work with the big system integrators for those who are actually building the, the space hardware, satellites and many other things? Uh, Freddy, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Robert. Yes, first of all, uh, unfortunately, I was not able to join today, but um, definitely uh, I would like to present, uh, let's say, uh, Thalassinia Space which has a very wide range of, uh, of activities. Um, <clears throat> and then in my presentation, I first, uh, the first uh, part of the presentation is, let's say, to show you uh, what you are doing and uh, to underline also in each domain what are our challenges in, in the future. So that's, uh, that's the, the idea. Uh, please, can you present my first or second slide? Yes, uh, thank, no, the first one. Yes, thank you. Uh, so um, just to, to show that this uh, range is clearly a wide range starting from, let's say, ground stations um, and uh, let's say uh, having uh, several elements in all, let's say, altitudes like, uh, like uh, low, low Earth orbit for 400 kilometer with orbital uh, infrastructures. Uh, at 700 kilometers, there is optical uh, solutions and radar solutions for Earth observation. And then uh, it comes to 800 kilometers with constellations, mainly in telecom, uh, in 800 kilometers, and also in 20,000 kilometers for MEO constellations like Galileo. And then there is the famous GEO stationary orbit with uh, uh, 36,000 kilometers uh, for our GEO telecom satellites. And finally, uh, there is all the exploration domain going to uh, moon or, or much wider like Mars or, or beyond. So next, please. Um, Thales Linear Space is a part of uh, the five G GBUs, Global Business Unit of Thales. And uh, uh, it's a joint venture between Thales and uh, Leonardo. And there are roughly 8,000 people. Uh, next slide, please and located mainly in Europe. We have uh, 17 uh, uh, sites in Europe uh, and one uh, site in the uh, in US. And recently we created uh, in Luxembourg our last, uh, let's say, um, branch, which is dealing with digital competence center and digital transformation. So next slide, please. So this uh, next slide shows you the, the different uh, areas you are working in. So. It shows you not, uh, let's say, what you are making, but it shows what is possible to make thanks to satellites. Uh, first, to connect people, thanks to telecom. Second, to secure uh, our life in, on Earth. Um, then, uh, for sure, uh, to navigate and to travel uh, safely, to explore and also to observe uh, the Earth mainly with space observation. Um, next slide, please. Starting with the telecom, which is the main activity, uh, roughly 40% of our, our business, uh, the idea is clearly to, to bring access to internet of everyone. And uh, that's why we developed a big families of uh, satellite, geosatellites. Um, as I said, it's a family, which means uh, that uh, this is a business. If you enter in this business, there is a, a long-term, let's say, relationship with Thales. Uh, sometimes uh, more than 10 years for one family. Uh, Connect uh, VHTH, for example, is our la latest space with new satellite. And uh, just to give you an example, it's uh, next slide, please. You see it, it, it's nine meter high. You can show the movie. And um, <clears throat> yes, thank you. Yes, you see, this is just the payload of the satellite. And the overall size is nine meter high a 45 meter uh, solar race. And uh, just uh, as an example, how it goes fast in our world, this satellite is seven more powerful as the same one built 
two years before. So which gives you an idea about the, the, what is behind in terms of innovation. And this is one of, uh, let's say, the driver in our business. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just a final view about uh, telecom, uh, which is clearly uh, um, a game changer, uh, meaning uh, constellations. And there is also a small movie you see on the right side. Um, you see this uh, constellation uh, business. Uh, can you please click on the right uh, button on the top right? Yeah, thank you. And you see that Thales Edina Space is involved in constellations since the 90s with uh, uh, several uh, programs like Global Star, Iridium Next, and uh, um, O3B. Um, now, for sure, we are selected in the latest uh, uh, generation of, uh, of uh, constellations, thanks to uh, Telesat. We will build a light speed uh, program with uh, inter-satellite connection using uh, optical links. And for sure, the challenge in this domain uh, is first, okay, try to enter in geo uh, supply chain, but you have to uh, make some preliminary activities to be, let's say, in the right level of maturity when it comes to this type of families. And uh, for me, the next challenge is, and the most important challenge is for sure, the next uh, European constellation, which is Iris Square. And definitely, we are ready to embark new players in this adventure. Um, please, next slide. So when it comes to space, we are talking about security. And uh, perhaps uh, next slide. Yes, uh, security is, is uh, in relation with uh, space observation, uh, radar or optical observation, uh, in order to have a good vision of what happens on, in some areas. But it's also linked to secured communication, thanks to, let's say, uh, uh, cyber security and secure communication on our uh, telecom satellites, which is, by the way, something we do since more than 40 years. And when I'm talking about security, you see on the left side, there is also a security need in space. Then today we are facing uh, spy satellites. We have to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, develop new technologies to protect or to detect uh, the spy satellite and then to protect our satellites in orbit. So this is definitely also a next challenge huh, to, uh, to, uh, to end joint cybersecurity, to develop our cybersecurity, to uh, work on optical uh, communications and to work on in-orbit operations to defend our satellite. So new areas for new players. Next slide, please. Space to travel. Yes, this is definitely, uh, uh, next slide, please, um, an area uh, online maps or navigation apps have clearly an impact in our daily life. So, uh, and uh, this is also a very important area for Palestinian space. And behind this uh, activity, there is a lot of new challenges. Uh, for example, Internet of Things. Uh, and the next slide, I will go fast. Um, next slide. Uh, yes, uh, just to uh, resume the challenges in this area of navigation, uh, there is new constellation to build with nanosatellites, for, for example, IoT, I talked about. There is also uh, to modernize our ground station. Then uh, we have to rely on, on, on ground station infrastructures and we have to secure them. So again, the security, the cybersecurity is on top of our challenges in this field. And uh, there is also new space applications, for example, uh, indoor, uh, indoor uh, um, IoT, which is not possible today, but we try to develop some technologies. And when it comes to navigation, it's not only on ground, on Earth, there is also navigation in space or to go to the moon. So there is uh, several new areas we have to explore and we have to be uh, competitive. Uh, next slide. Just uh, to have a short look, then uh, for sure, Galileo is a very important uh, program for us. And uh, by the way, we, have, we are building the next uh, Galileo second generation six satellite to improve the, let's say, the accuracy and also the, the, to be more robust against uh, interference and, and jamming. Um, so um, next slide, please. 
So coming to the one of the uh, important field is the Earth observation uh, domain. And uh, um, in this domain, clearly we have to be more accurate. We have to, uh, to measure. Uh, and one of the major objective is to measure the climate uh, variables. And you have to know that in uh, the satellite, let's say, uh, is a powerful sensor for this. Um, I, I, I think we can measure 26 out of 50 uh, climate variables, thanks to satellite. Uh, by the way, this morning we had just a, a, a presentation about, uh, about um, uh, sustainability and satellite definitely will play a role, not only to monitor, but to control uh, what happens on Earth in this domain. Uh, let's go next slide, please. Uh, and there is a movie. Uh, just to show you uh, a domain we are uh, in since more than 40 years. We build all the Meteosat uh, satellites, you, you, you know, since uh, 40 years, Meteosat 1, 2, 3, and this is the third generation, uh, which is launched already. And uh, this means that in space, we have to rely on long-term relationship with our customers, but also with our, uh, with our partners and suppliers. That's uh, really important. And when it comes to uh, Earth observation, next slide, please. Uh, we come to Copernicus, which is definitely uh, the, the, the most important program for Earth observation, uh, and uh, which is managed by ESA and ordered by uh, the Open Commission. Uh, on the right side, you have some, uh, some movie in this slide. Yes, thank you. And uh, so Thalassian Space is on board on, on 12 out of, uh, on 11 out of 12 uh, Copernicus missions. And uh, we are responsible for payload, but also for global system satellites. Uh, so, and by the way, uh, we succeed to enter in our supply chain for Copernicus, uh, new countries with new companies thanks to uh, preparation activities. I will talk later about this, but it's uh, really important that we succeed to enter new uh, players, even in a such a complex program like, uh, like Copernicus, which has to deal with uh, high technology and, and, uh, and um, uh, reliability. So in this domain, the next challenges are clearly uh, to improve our computer processing to, uh, for what concerns the information we have from satellites. Uh, artificial intelligence will play a crucial role. Then there is so much data to exploit that we have to rely on artificial intelligence. Um, there is also a next uh, challenge, uh, next program, which will be managed by ESA and European Commission, which is the Digital Twin Earth. And clearly, uh, this program is uh, an opportunity to uh, embark uh, new players then we have to uh, develop this gigantesque program to understand better what happens on Earth and also to understand to give the, all the tools, all the information to the politicians to take the right decisions. Uh, then we can make, thanks to this uh, digital twin, we can forecasting uh, all, everything what could happen depending our, uh, let's say, uh, activities we have today on ground. So the last uh, activity, next slide, please, is linked to exploration. So please, there is a movie. And uh, you will see that for more than 40 years, we, we are developing uh, expertise in this field. And uh, what is not really known is that, for example, the International Space Station, 50% of the, the pressurized module are made by Dallas in space. So which gives us, let's say, a background in this domain and which helps us now to have new uh, challenges. For example, in commercial activities, we have signed recently a, a partnership with Axiom to build uh, the first commercial space station. And we have also, you have just seen it, uh, the space rider, which is an autonomous vehicle to make some exper experimentation in space. And uh, very interesting is uh, the adventure to the moon. And we are preparing the next steps to go to the moon and to make some habitat, some pressurized habitat on the moon. So you have understood that in this domain, there is a lot of things to uh, imagine. Uh, there is a commercial way, 
to make orbital servicing, in orbit uh, uh, operations. There is uh, a new space economy to develop uh, to have more uh, access to space, thanks to space radar, for example. And when it comes to science and exploration, uh, there is the navigation, there is the moon habitat, and there is some scientific instruments we have to, uh, let's say, uh, send to, uh, to, to space. So how uh, all these challenges can, uh, we, can, uh, we can win these challenges? Please, the next slide. And uh, it will come to the conclusion. So first of all, okay, we have our classical roadmaps to develop new technology, but also we rely uh, to kind of uh, new space, innovative, uh, let's say, uh, initiatives. Um, and we have internally some uh, uh, actions like the innovation cluster uh, to uh, support employees uh, uh, to uh, create or to innovate uh, out of a classical way we have in our roadmap process. So this is very important and uh, we have to rely to, to new ideas and we have to uh, think out of the box as uh, usually uh, people are saying. And uh, for example, there is also an incubation center. Uh, we give the six months to a small team to realize some uh, proof of concept to identify if the, the idea is of interest for, for, for Palestinian space. So it's kind of a, of a, of a startup, internal startup uh, initiative. Next slide, please. So, but when it comes to, to a startup, uh, we have uh, a lot of challenges for, and a lot of opportunities. You have understood that we have to uh, develop small sets, we have to miniaturization, we have to uh, create new missions uh, in space, including in-orbit operations. We have to uh, improve optical communications. This, morning, this afternoon, somebody talked about the quantum uh, communication, which is dealing with optical communication, laser communication in space and from space to, to Earth. And uh, we have everything that is uh, related to ground, to ground stations, to uh, applications. And finally, and uh, last but not, not least, we have also to modernize our industrial approach, which means that there is a revolution in our industry to, um, to uh, let's say, to, uh, to improve our way to manufacture and to develop. And definitely, these are definitely, uh, let's say, areas of, uh, of uh, cooperation. Uh, next slide. And uh, so, which means, next, yes, uh, we have to, to make connections with startup and SMEs. And uh, next slide, please. And for this, we have also a kind of process which is called open innovation. And uh, we are trying to uh, establish a database of uh, several new companies. We establish dialogues to, let's say, to select uh, companies. And finally, uh, when uh, there is a, a tough selection process, we are trying to start uh, activities with uh, new companies like which could be suppliers, we could, which could be partners, and even which could be customers for, for Thalassemia space. So this is typically and clearly our uh, uh, innovation process and our open innovation process. To, we cannot win alone, So which, which means we have to rely on a large network of, of companies. And uh, I think it's the last slide, please. So this is more or less my domain since uh, 10 years now, or more than 10 years, we developed a specific initiative thanks to the support of ESA, and uh, which is in particular oriented to uh, a new member states, associate members, or cooperating states. And uh, uh, ESA presented uh, this afternoon um, this, uh, this uh, domain. And we are clearly active. Huh? We have, uh, uh, in the last years, uh, developed more than 130 uh, programs uh, with partners, projects, and uh, a lot of projects uh, are, uh, let's say, um, now uh, in a trend to enter into a supply chain. So there is a clear, uh, let's say, uh, there is clear success stories. And by the way, in the last call, in the RPA call, we managed to work uh, to propose something with Latvian companies uh, in domain of interest. So what we are doing in this initiative is first, we have to identify skills, 
then uh, we discuss about the right product, what is of interest for our boss companies, let's say for Thales and for the, the partner. And then we have to enter in a win-win spirit, which is uh, sharing, uh, let's say, the, 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 the work correctly and defining the rules so that, uh, let's say, there is a win-win approach uh, on, this, uh, on this initiative. So this is my last slide, next slide perhaps. Um, yes, so this is my last slide. Um, so you have uh, seen that uh, space is, uh, is clearly, uh, I hope that you have learned uh, more about Thalassemia space. Space is clearly an industry which creates jobs. Huh? It's not uh, just for, uh, for uh, research. There is clearly an industry behind and there is some, uh, some jobs to be created. And uh, you have understood that space for me is passion and it's a fantastic domain. Um, and I hope that uh, this domain will attract a new, new talents, huh? young people um, coming in this, uh, in this field. And uh, definitely we have, you have seen that we have a main challenge on Earth. Huh? We have to, to monitor the, the, uh, the development of Earth to be sustainable. And uh, as presented this morning, and uh, I hope that this presentation uh, gives you ideas to cooperate with us. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for me, uh, so this adventure is a, a long adventure since 40 years, but uh, honestly, I have never seen pass the time. So it passed so fast. And, um, and uh, so this is my last word. I hope uh, you have some questions. And by the way, I will be present in the, the ESTE conference, the ESA conference in May uh, during three days. And you will have, uh, let's say, uh, I will uh, there with uh, four uh, colleagues in, from Dallas in Space, which is just a sign that we clearly rely on this initiative in, in ESA. And uh, we will be happy to, to meet you. Thank you. Anything? Thank you, thank you, Freddie. Uh, a little bit round of applause to Freddie, yes. So you can, you can feel the spirit from Latvia. Uh, Freddy, very quick follow-up question. Uh, I know it's been, it's been taking a lot of time for us in Latvia and Latvian Space Office to get in touch with you, uh, to present you all the capabilities of Latvia. Uh, what would you, in a brief uh, suggestions, uh, would, would propose to those companies who are thinking about doing business in the space? You showed a lot of good opportunities uh, in material sciences and electronics, optics, and, and many more. Uh, those who are already uh, doing something, what would you suggest to them? What would be the best way to at least start negotiations with Thales Elenia to find if their product, their technologies might be used for, for space applications, for space missions? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's a good question. It's, I, I know that uh, it's terrible when you are in front of a big company, you have difficulties to know in which, uh, in which door you have to enter. And uh, so there's two ways, let's say, uh, to enter in a supply chain uh, like Thales which is, okay, if the company is well experienced and has already some, uh, some products and some background, okay, there is the classical way to, to answer to requests for information, to request for proposals, and then to be selected like uh, for an ESA project. Huh? There is a TEB, it's the same in Thales in a space. And in this sense, you will be in competition with the rest of the world. So that's clear. Uh, then there is a second way. I, I, I like this way, and uh, I'm working 100% uh, in this direction, is to create connections um, um, in advance, let's say, to, to, to try to connect people together to, uh, and to develop, uh, let's say, the right product. So when I say the right product, it's always difficult for small companies to know exactly what they have to develop. They have all the skills, usually, but we have to exchange together what type of product they could develop, which fits with our next plans and with the market. So, and in this sense, we have just first to uh, identify these companies. So, and uh, uh, in Latvia, uh, we have uh, the connection with you. Huh? There is a the space, uh, let's say uh, the space cluster. And this is a way uh, to exchange about uh, local competencies and skills. And then uh, there is also uh, events like this one. So you will see my, my internet, uh, my uh, email address uh, on, on the last slide. 
and uh, we can also enter in connections through through ESA. If you have the connection with ESA, they can let's say send us uh, the, the right uh, person to contact. And then I have to find internally that organization the right people, which is able to talk to you with uh, let's say the right experts. And then using uh, the ESA calls like the RPA call, it's a fantastic way to start something together and to create some maturity. Uh, it's not only maturity in terms of uh, technology, it's also maturity in terms of industry and also maturity in terms of human relation and human contact. So, Good. but I can talk about this uh, several hours. So yes, I think, uh, I think you said the most important part that first uh, any company could start uh, approaching Latvian space office or Latvian space yeah. industry association to, to present themselves, to show the interest. And from there on, we can, we can get in touch with you. Thank you, Freddy, so much. Another uh, round of applause to Freddy. Thank you. Have a good day uh, in Paris.